Alhamdulillah, we are in the month of Ramadan, and this month, as I mentioned yesterday, is the month of fasting. And throughout this month, inshallah, Aziz, we will be fasting. So it's important for us to understand that what are some lessons that we can learn and benefit from from our fast. So for the next few days, inshallah, I want to highlight one thing, one major benefit that you can take back home from your fast. And with each benefit that we cover per day, I would like for you and I to focus on that one benefit throughout the day and ask ourselves that have I brought this principle of fasting into my life or not, inshallah. So the first I wanted to start off with by quoting a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, <coughs> مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're doing this for Allah, this is your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاحْتِسَابًا And you will have hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you in full. غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whatever sins were committed in the past, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will overlook them all, inshaAllah aziz what this hadith is teaching us is that this fast of ours, it can be the ultimate eraser if we match in it the sincerity that we should give. And Ibn Hajar al-Asqarani rahimahullah ta'ala, when commentating on the word ihtisaban, he says that a person, he fasts hoping for the reward to only be with Allah and not with anyone else at all. You're doing it solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars say that fasting is such a unique act that no person can ever doubt a person for showing off because nobody ever knows about it until you tell them yourself. It's such a secret that you could be driving around and the truth is that on the way here, while we were driving to the masjid for iftar or tomorrow in the afternoon when you're driving to work and back from work, the people that you're driving past, do you think they have any idea that you are doing something that's so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you think they have any idea that you're doing such a courageous and awesome and great thing that you haven't had anything to eat or drink for 16, 17 hours a day? And like I mentioned the other day, for some people across the world, 20 hours? Nobody has any idea. It's your secret with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's those deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the most. Allama ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that there is an agreement of the scholars that every messenger that came from the beginning of mankind until the Prophet wasallam came to teach the people sincerity. Every book that was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to instruct people of sincerity. And the summary of our deen is to make our lives sincere for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the summary of the entire deen. That's why the scholars, they say, that if a person even finds one moment in their life of absolute sincerity, you're doing an action just for Allah and not for anyone at all. If you even find one of those moments in your life, it's very possible that Allah will give you Jannah and return of it. And they quote the hadith of Bukhari of the lady who committed zina throughout her life. And she saw a dog that was thirsty. And she took her footwear and she filled it with water and gave it to the animal. The animal drank from there and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that lady Jannah. Just one moment of sincerity you find in your life that you're doing something for the sake of Allah and not for anyone else at all. My teacher used to say that with every day in your life, and at least for Ramadan, the rest of our life is a, not, is a long journey, but at least for this Ramadan, make an intention to do one special, unique, good deed that no other soul even knows about. Even if it's you saying subhanAllah once that nobody else knows about. Let there be a secret between yourself and Allah every day that's just between the two of you. It's your sincere act, it's your gift to Allah. Hopefully that gift to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that act of ours will come back to us to protect us on the Day of Judgment from any wrong that we've done in the world. Now we all know about sincerity. We hear about sincerity regularly. There are many narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about sincerity. But how can we develop our sincerity in the month of Ramadan? Fasting is teaching us sincerity, but how can we build on that? How do we establish solid sincerity in the month of Ramadan? For that I have some points, the scholars they say, that if a person follows these points, there is hope that inshallah al-aziz, you will be able to reach the high levels of sincerity. The first thing the scholars mentioned, for a person who's looking for sincerity, is to start off by making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sincerity. 
Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you that person who doesn't care about what people have to say, what people have to you know, comment about what you're doing in your life. And people who lack in this sincerity, who can't live for themselves and can't live for Allah, they end up living for people. At the end of it, you lose out. Because your life gets wasted trying to please other people, and ultimately when you stand in front of Allah on the Day of Judgment, the reward isn't there that you could have achieved. So you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing the scholars say, is that when you're doing a deed, try to keep it secret. Try not to open it in front of people. Yes, there is virtue in doing a deed publicly, if you feel that you can motivate other people to do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, إِن تُبْتُ السَّبَقَاتِ فَنِعِمَّهِ وَإِن تُفْوُهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَاءَ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ If you openly give charity, what a beautiful thing. But if you secretly give it, that's even better for you. Now why is Allah telling companions to give the charity openly? Because if one person gives it, it may motivate another person. So having a public form of ibadah is a good thing, but also try to keep certain ibadah that are secret, that are not known to people. You don't need to go around announcing everything you do. You know, the time that we live in is such that we pray two rakat, the hajjud salah, and we come out of our home, we expect Jibreel to come to us with the next revelation, right? You know, brother, last night I didn't get any sleep, the hajjud kept me awake. We're always boasting over our deeds. Sometimes let that be a secret. Close that mouth off of yours and let that action be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third thing the scholars they say is that when you do a good deed, after doing that deed, think of people that are actually greater than you and doing much more than you. Because if you don't think of people that are doing more than you, then you'll, be, you'll end up becoming very proud of what you're doing. And that'll lead to you losing your sincerity. So look at people that are above you. Hey, I read one juice today, but there are pers- you know, the other person that I know, he reads five juice a day, so I'm not doing enough. That'll save you from being happy, I'm not happy, a person should have joy in their deed, but it'll save you from the pride and from sucking away the sincerity in your actions. Similarly, the scholars, they say that when you do a good deed, another thing that will help you create sincerity in your action is that you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after doing the deed that maybe it's not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So that way that keeps you humble as well. Ya Allah, I did the deed, but there's a possibility it's not accepted, so I ask you to accept it. That'll help an individual maintain sincerity as well. Another thing the scholars they say is that when a person is doing a deed, and if people do come to know of your deed, try not to be affected by their words. Don't let their praise get to you. Remind yourself of who you are. At times someone may come and say one or two words of praise, and we become so excited with ourselves that we begin to float in the air, we begin to fly in the air like balloons, without realizing what our weight actually is. My teacher used to share one story. He used to say that there was a man who once inherited an animal from his father. His father was passing away, left him behind a cow. He, kept, he took care of the cow, took care of the cow. A time came in his life where the cow became a burden. It wasn't providing for them anymore. Rather, they had to invest on the cow. So as a family, they agreed that they would sell it. He went to the market, he said to the people, who will purchase this cow from me for whatever the price, a thousand dinar, for example. Nobody even paid attention to him. In the evening, he was going back home. One man came to him and said to him, I saw you in the market all day trying to sell that cow, and not even one customer looked at you. Tomorrow, I will sell the cow for you, and I will give you a great profit. Whatever profit we make, 50-50. That person said, well, if you can meet my th- a thousand dinar, whatever profit you make, you and I will go 50-50. The next day, this man, he goes to the market, and he climbs a nice elevated area in the market. He gathers the people around. He says, everyone, gather around, gather around. Today, I have a very special deal for you. One of the most unique deals that that has ever crossed this market. Today I am going to bring before you a cow. And this cow was brought, this cow was born from a royal family. Many years ago, the British invaded this country. And when they colonized the country, they brought their animals and it mated with the royals from this animal, from the royals from the, 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 the royal family, they had an animal, they made it and then blah, blah, blah. He made up this, you know, fancy shamancy story. And he said, who wants to buy it now? So one guy got up and said 10,000 dinar. Another guy said 15,000. Another guy said 20,000. And they started going up and up. They reached 50,000. When they reached 50,000, the original owner said, he got up and said, everyone go home, sales off. Nobody's buying this cow today. So his friend said, what are you doing? We're just about to make a killing right now. Why don't you just zip it? So he said, I didn't realize the cow was worth that much. I'm not selling this thing. (laughs) And he took it back home. My teacher used to say, if you laugh at this, learn to laugh at yourself. (coughs) Because this man was fooled just by a few lies. Someone dipped their tongue into a little honey and started saying stuff, and this person forgot the reality. How can you and I forget our reality, who we are, even though we know ourselves? 
we know who we are and just a few people they can come and put a few lines together and a few praises and now the person becomes a shaykh and they're calling you shaykh because you have a hat on and you actually feel, yeah man, I am the shaykh. Right? Keeping yourself humble and reminding yourself not to get too infatuated by other people praising you. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu wants someone to praise him. He would make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to say, Allahumma la tu'akhibni bima yaqulun. Oh Allah, don't hold me accountable for what they're saying about me. Who's saying this? Abu Bakr. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding him that there is only one person on the face of this earth who I couldn't pay back and that's Abu Bakr. You've done so much for me. He said that, Zawwajani ibnatahu. He gave his wife to me. He gave his wealth to me. He gave his life to me. This is the only man I couldn't pay back. And Abu Bakr was sitting there and he was crying in the corner of the gathering. He said, وَهَلْ أَنَا وَمَالِي إِلَّا لَكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ O Messenger of Allah, why are you saying you're thanking me? It was an honor that I had the opportunity to give everything to you. This is the man that when someone praises him, he says, Allahumma la tu'akhidni bima yaqulun. Oh Allah, don't hold me accountable for what they're saying about me. وَغْفِرْ لِي مَا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And forgive me for those things that they don't know about me. There's so much about me these people don't know. I'm thankful that you're hiding it, but these people, Allah, don't hold them accountable for falsely praising me. So remember not to get too proud over your actions that you do and people's praises. And the last thing is remind yourself that if you can preserve your action, if you can maintain your sincerity for your deeds, this deed will be beneficial to you. Because the people that are praising you in the world and the people that you may go after to please, they're not going to accompany you to your grave. And the one thing that will help you maintain sincere is to remind yourself that you will be alone in your grave. And only your most sincere actions will come and benefit you. No matter how grand the action is, if it lacks in sincerity, it lacks in acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many narrations in this regard. The discussion of sincerity isn't one that can be covered in 10-15 minutes, rather it's one that's covered over days of discussion. You all know that I'm not exaggerating in that at all. So let this Ramadan, let today, let tomorrow's fast be about sincerity. Let the rest of Ramadan be about sincerity. Every day we're going to cover different principles that we learn from the past. And I want these principles to linger on in our mind and for us to focus and think about where is my sincerity and my action. The next 24 hours, everything you do, ask yourself, who am I actually doing this for? And if you can start asking yourself that question, who am I doing it for? Trust me one day that answer will be Allah. And when the answer becomes Allah for everything, you ask yourself, why am I doing it? That's when you reach the level of ihsan, excellence. أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاهُ The highest level of faith is that you worship Allah in a way as if you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person is standing in front of Allah, you think you would care about the person to your right or left? Not at all. فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ And if you can't reach that spiritual state to know that you are standing in front of Allah, فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاهُ Allah is still watching you. Be careful of what thoughts cross your mind and what intentions you have, what your motives are. At the beginning, middle and end of every action, remind yourself, oh Allah, this is for you. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from amongst His sincere servants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts all of our actions. Any of our actions that lack in sincerity, Ya Allah, we ask that you fulfill that lack with your forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us amongst His sincere, resurrects us with the sincere. With the sincere. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.